Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone, the talk show that focuses on insurance in your practice. I'm Steve Savant, your host, insurance color commentator, and interviewer extraordinaire. I'm with Clark Hogan, who says, from Opulent Capital, that life settlements are back with a vengeance, and we're playing in a whole new market. We were talking about prerequisites on what we need to look at. 62 years of age for people who have term contracts. Term contracts, I can't even believe we're doing term. And then 70 years of age for permanent contracts. And another thing we're talking about right now is we want to be able to engage and push the market even further. We're looking at minimum death benefits of right around 100,000 you were talking before we went to the break. Mm -hmm. Now, when I think about when you're thinking about, well, I want to watch this video over again because I want to see what he said in the car. Remember, all our videos and all our segments are always distributed on Vimeo and YouTube, Insurance News Net, Agent Navigator. You can even see some of this stuff on the blog at the Insurance Forum and, of course, on all our social networks on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. We're everywhere you want to be. i got to tell you, the whole social network is blowing my mind. And one, one other last thing, remember, I'm not a tax advisor or an attorney, so if you have any legal issues about what we're talking about, always consult your fiduciary first. And if you're with a broker dealer, always touch base with your compliance department. So when I'm talking about my minimum death benefit of 100k, and I have my structure down, how do I do? I have a precursory format. Do you have like a form or a maybe a census or a data collector that we can use? Sure. So what we have is a what's called a pre-qualification application. It's downloadable. Uh, you have a copy of it and can distribute it. How many pages is that? One page. It's, well, it's, that's it? It's really, I yeah, love that. It's, it's just that simple. It, it just asks the uh, simple minimum set of questions. Typically, mm -hmm. face amount, carrier, premium, age, uh, health history, mm -hmm. and then you know contact information for the client. And from that and a level premium illustration, we can typically, with a couple more steps, come to a quick appraisal of where we think that mm -hmm. policy will baseline as far as a, as a, as a sale price. Yeah. Well, let's just, just for imagination's sake, let's say we fill it out to the best of our ability mm -hmm. and we send it in, what kind of downtime are we looking at? Turnaround, kind of, a, a, sure. again, a cursory, it's a cursory quote, it's yep. not a guarantee, it's just a kind of a, here's where we think it'll lay out. Right, so within, uh, provided we, we have that and uh, uh, we can typically turn around an initial appraisal within 24 hours. It's just that easy. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we have the mechanics of software down now that we can mm -hmm. <clears throat> pretty much price out a baseline of where we feel mm -hmm. our buyers, based on our history and what our buyers are telling us, what they'll mm -hmm. bid on a particular policy. And then our goal yeah. is to, of course, based on that appraisal, you know, seek the acceptance of the client mm -hmm. and with the, with the notion that we're going to try and drive that up as high as possible. Mm -hmm. When you see ratios today, and I know that this is hard because we're talking about gender, you know, gender sure. pricing. You're talking about what the LE of the client. We're talking about is it term or perm? Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of things that are in the mix, but have you seen a regular rule of thumb now? Would you say is it how it's cat if it's permanent, it's cash value plus X percent, or have you seen anything that's kind of a rule of thumb? Well, I mean, uh, you know, our statistics in our company have have been. Uh, Astonishing, to mm. say the least. I mean, you know, we're, whereas we're seeing uh, cash surrenders typically average around one to three percent of the face amount because policies have either burned themselves out or just haven't mm. premiums haven't been paid in a while. We've been averaging north of twenty percent, sometimes north of forty percent in terms of a lump sum cash distribution to the client. Of so the death benefit. Of the death benefit. Of the death benefit. Of the, of the face amount of that policy. So if you look in terms well, that's of... extraordinary. If you look in terms of, of the opportunity mm -hmm. for the client, you know, it's apples and oranges. It's an, mm -hmm. it's an incredible difference. If mm -hmm. I could tell you I'm going to give you 4,000% more than what the insurance company mm -hmm. is going to give you, you'd probably mm -hmm. think I was crazy. <laughs> Well, as long as I'm, my, most clients are pretty good with the idea of I'm getting my premium plus a very good rate of return, mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes exceedingly great, right. right? And I'm receiving that money, and I would have never been able to generate this even at my life expectancy, even if I continued to pay premiums. And here I'm getting a lump sum, and I have no more premium obligation. Well, that's right. I love that. Yeah, and it's, that's another piece to remember is that we're not only reducing the bills of the mm -hmm. of the policy owner, so we've just eliminated uh, a substantial annual premium obligation 
And then we're also giving them a lump sum cash settlement, which they can do with whatever they please. And that's also mm -hmm. something to remember in the eyes of a producer, that's a, there's multiple commission opportunities. So mm -hmm. from the settlement, but then also taking that lump sum cash distribution and rolling it into another policy, rolling it into an annuity, rolling it into another financial mm -hmm. uh, tool, at which all of which generate you know, mm -hmm. commissionable events. You know, from a timeline point of view, from the time we get a cursory quote mm -hmm. to the time we get our bids done and we've done all the legal work because I'm assuming the beneficiaries have to sign off on all That's this, right? right? Mm -hmm. So let's say between that time, what what is an average time from the day we start a cursory quote mm -hmm. to the time we actually finish it and the client has a check in hand? Mm -hmm. We're averaging about six weeks between the time that the person goes from the cursory quote to uh, actually presenting mm -hmm. the three top buyers and their bids, mm -hmm. their their net bids back to the client. So in other words, the three offers, mm -hmm. right? And then from, so that's between three to six weeks. And then to actually close the transaction and distribute cash back to the mm -hmm. client, that takes another anywhere from three to six weeks. You said three bids. Is that pretty standard, three bid, three bids, or do you have more than those? Usually? Well, we have right now an ecosystem of, of 50 plus buyers, mm -hmm. but we don't want to inundate. And plus, the, the you know, uh, each buyer has a different. This isn't like eBay, is it? That's right. No. Oh, okay. Each it's buyer like... has a different demographic. They're looking mm -hmm. for a different type of a policy. So, so they, it doesn't they make sense. They have their sense. own prerequisites. Prerequisites, right. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So what we're going to do is we're, mm -hmm. instead of giving them a, a bunch of information which they can't use, let's let's just call the, the high bids that mm -hmm. we've received, all the rest of them are irrelevant mm -hmm. anyway, and, and give them to the client. The client can then choose mm -hmm. you know if if that's interesting enough to them that they want to to sell their policy well i think it's really uh amazing that the this market has made a huge comeback mm -hmm. i mean I, I it's it's to to me this has always been about personal property the client owns his own personal property yeah. her own personal property it's a policy they should be able to do whatever they want now that's i know right. i got state regulations let's talk about this just to touch base mm -hmm. every state in the union is different on how they approach this that's right i'm assuming the street vernacular of wet paper two mm -hmm. years or less is pretty much off the table for everybody or no that might be still okay in in a certain seldom off mm -hmm. cases uh, you know, if, if there's been a significant change in health uh, on mm -hmm. the individual, uh, on behalf of the insured, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, tragedies occur. Mm -hmm. There, there have been opportunities where we've been able to do that. But the majority mm -hmm. of our business, more than 95% mm -hmm. of our business, is is dry paper, paper that's mm -hmm. past the contestability. Seasoned or, contracts. Seasoned paper. Yeah. Well, when I'm looking at the, the the block of business, I'm thinking about just Brokers Alliance alone. I'm just thinking of all this term that's coming up close to their conversion because you do want that's to right. catch it before the conversion that's right. right so i'm thinking about not only our block but i know all of our agents who have huge blocks of business in the geriatric mm -hmm. zone of 62 and above yeah. right so when i'm looking at that demographic we should be doing an enforced ledger on all this and making sure we have conversion credits that's yeah. what i'm hearing you say absolutely you know insurance policy audits and making mm -hmm. sure that the 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 policy owner is carrying enough mm -hmm. insurance on the insured. You know, we always talk about, producers always talk about the face amount or the mm -hmm. death benefit of the policy to take care of your estate, to take care of your family. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like we said before, the needs for insurance change. Here's an opportunity to call, to, to talk about what mm -hmm. we call the living benefit. Mm -hmm. So if I can convert this, this death benefit of a policy into an amount that you can use right now, mm -hmm. that's certainly gonna be something that always catches the, the interest of your client. Well, I'm thinking it with it with each state, and you have all these regs on what mm -hmm. you can and cannot do. So, if they wanted that, could you give Absolutely. them that? That's downloadable. There's <clears throat> there's 38 states now that have enforced regulation, and it's mm -hmm. not it's not pushing life settlements out. It's just regulating mm -hmm. and and uh, controlling licensing the individuals that are participating. So, it's in other words, it's getting rid of the fraudsters, mm -hmm. right? And it's making sure that that there's no abuse, there's no, nobody's taken advantage of, that everybody gets a fair shake. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want any of the information that Clark's talking about, whether it's the data collector, whether it's the state list to see what your specific state mm -hmm. allows and doesn't, 
you can go ahead and order that. You can just call us at 1-800-290-7226, extension 147. Or if you just want to write us at the show's address, thebiz at brokersalliance.com. We'll make sure Clark gets all this and he'll be able to walk you through it. And you'll take calls and you'll talk through That's with right. our yep. producers. Yeah, I, I, like the, I, I like the idea about introducing, reintroducing life settlements on a higher level, especially, I love this term idea, because so much of our buy, sell, cross purchase, stock redemption, a lot of these are terminating because they didn't buy permanent. Mm -hmm. Either they're gonna convert it because the liability is still on the books in the business succession right. plan, or if it's not, here's an idea for cash for a, for a company. Yeah, and that, that improves the, the, the cash flow of, mm -hmm. of the company. I mean, you're, you're essentially removing uh, you know, a check that you have to write each month or annually, you're, you're improving, you're reducing the liabilities and, and generating, in essence, a distribution mm -hmm. to the company that which goes translates right to the bottom line. Yeah, I just want to give a, it's my understanding also that uh, just from a heads up, I just want to make sure I fully disclose this, that even though you sell your policy, mm -hmm. It's still on your life, and if you went back to get other insurance, additional insurance you wanted, mm -hmm. just because you sold maybe one for one reason and you wanted to reinstate mm -hmm. or, or apply for another one, that it's the all-in total death benefit is still the calculation. That's right for suitability, right? I mean, it's, I still have to put the all-in number. Steve, I mean that that's rarely been an issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if there if the situation changes to a point mm -hmm. where the client needs more insurance again. Mm -hmm. That's because there's been an improvement in the overall right, right. you know, net asset, mm -hmm. net worth of the individual. But you're not and seeing in those that as particular an issue, cases, right? very rarely. Very I mean, at, at that stage in life, usually, mm -hmm. you know, one isn't looking to acquire. It, they don't have an explosive growth. It's, mm -hmm. it's rare that they have an explosive growth in, well, in their I, I'm net I'm kind of curious about cetera. another area, too, because we have on our books at Brokers Alliance, and I'm sure other carriers mm -hmm. have this, too, we have a significant amount of what I would call geriatric substandard and or impaired risk. Mm -hmm. And the, I, would, I would imagine that timeline would be from an LE point of view, making the policy maybe even more valuable. That's that's right. Yeah. All right, so so if I'm looking at that, I, I could I'd want to not only look at my term block of business before it's convert, but I'd also want to look at my substandard everything up in the geriatric zone. And in this case, we're going to say 62. Although I, I fear saying geriatric zone starts at 62 since I'm right on the threshold. Well. So, but I'm just saying I I I'm, I'm trying to see all the opportunity. Yeah. Well, you know, and and this this factors right into uh, you know increasing healthcare costs, mm -hmm. right, and long-term oh, yeah. care. Oh, yeah. I mean, with the recession and the housing crisis, a lot of people saw that nest egg, that shrink. which they were planning on, right. shrink, right? So here's an opportunity to potentially refund that long-term mm -hmm. care policy or refund sure. that, that, that plan which improves your quality of life. You can perhaps get a bump in, in, mm -hmm. in your living, uh, where, where, where you've chosen to live, sure. take a vacation, etc. Well, you can call us again at 1-800-290-7226. I'm Steve Savant for Clark Hogan and Opulent Capital. The next time, we'll be back. Get into the zone, the business insurance zone. This has been a Bravo video event of the National Insurance Clearinghouse and Brokers Alliance, one of the largest distributors of insurance products and services to a nationwide network of insurance professionals. You can contact Brokers Alliance at brokersalliance.com or 1-800-290-7226, extension 147.